Hello, good morning, welcome to St Mary's Halesworth. It's eight o'clock on Wednesday the 7th of August. I'm reading Common Worship Daily Prayer from the Church of England. Uh, you will find the words in Common Worship Daily Prayer, Church House Publishing, uh, in the morning and evening prayer during ordinary time section, towards the beginning, after the two prayer during the day uh, parts of the book. Uh, morning and evening prayer, ordinary time, morning prayer, Wednesday. Also the Church of England's website, Arema's Daily Prayer, and one may download apps for Apple Android device, <coughs> uh, Alma, Ama, um, Simon Kershaw behind it, as he is behind the Remus. Um, good chat, good work. Um, you may also join electronically. Zoom codes are on the Blythe Church's website and Facebook page. We're live streaming on Facebook. The audio will be on my Dominic Doble YouTube channel presently. And of course, uh, analog, you may join the building 8 and 6, Tuesday to Saturday. Commemorating John Mason Neal today. O Lord, open our lips and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. A song of God's glorious name. O Lord, our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Your majesty above the heavens is praised, out of the mouths of babes at the breast. You have founded a stronghold against your foes, that you might still the enemy and the avenger. And I consider your heavens the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars that you have ordained. What are mortals that you should be mindful of them, mere human beings that you should seek them out. You have made them little lower than the angels, and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them dominion over the works of your hands, and put all things under their feet. <coughs> all sheep and oxen, even the wild beasts of the field, birds of the air, and the fish of the sea, and whatsoever moves in the paths of the sea. O Lord our Governor, how glorious is your name in all the world. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. <clears throat> As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, so God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. <coughs> the appointed psalmody this morning is Psalm number 77. You'll find the Psalter at the back of the book. Psalm 77. In the day of trouble I have sought the Lord. I cry aloud to God. I cry aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble I have sought the Lord. By night my hand is stretched out and does not tire. <coughs> My soul refuses comfort. I think upon God and I groan. I ponder and my spirit faints. You will not let my eyelids close. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old. I remember the years long past. I commune with my heart in the night. My spirit searches for understanding. Will the Lord cast us off for ever? Will he no more show us his favour? Has his loving mercy clean gone for ever? Has his promise come to an end for evermore? Has God forgotten to be gracious, as he shut up his compassion in displeasure? And I said my grief is this, that the right hand of the Most High has lost its strength. I will remember the works of the Lord, and call to mind your wonders of old time. <clears throat> I will meditate on all your works, and ponder your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. <coughs> you is so great a God as our God. You are the God who worked wonders, and declared your power among the peoples. With a mighty arm you redeemed your people the children of Jacob and Joseph. The waters saw you, O God. The waters saw you and were afraid. The depths also were troubled. The clouds poured out water. The skies thundered. Your arrows flashed on every side. The voice of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lit up the ground. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was in the sea and your paths in the great waters. But your footsteps were not known. You led your people like sheep by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. In the day of my trouble, I have sought the Lord. Scrolling past our first reading to the song of the word of the Lord, turning back in our books to morning prayer on Wednesday. Turn to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked abandon their ways and the unrighteous their thoughts. Return to the Lord who will have mercy, to our God who will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from above, and return not again but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread to eat. <coughs> so is my word which goes forth from my mouth, it will not return to me fruitless, but it will accomplish that which I purpose, and succeed in the task I gave it. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Return to the Lord, who will have mercy, to our God, who will richly pardon. <coughs> This from Kindle edition of Celebrating the Saints. John Mason Neal was born in 1818, <clears throat> and whilst an undergraduate at Cambridge, was influenced by the ideas of the Tractarians. He was a founder of the Cambridge Camden Society, which stimulated interest in ecclesiastical art and which played a part in the revival of a Catholic ritual in the Church of England. Whilst warden of Sackville College, East Grinstead, a post he held from 1846, Neal founded the Society of St Margaret, which grew into one of the largest of Anglican women's religious communities. Neil is remembered as an accomplished hymn writer and his influence on Anglican worship has been considerable. He suffered frail health for many years and died on the Feast of Transfiguration in 1866. Which is, I guess, why we remember him as soon as we possibly can afterwards. Transfiguration was yesterday, of course. So to our first Bible reading, 1 Samuel 28 from 3, 1 Samuel 28 verse 3. Uh, 1 Samuel is um, three books into the history section of the Hebrew Scriptures, eight books in from the beginning. We've got the first five of the Torah, then the history after Joshua and Judges, 1 Samuel. I think that's right. It's about there anyway. A quarter of the way into your Bible is you've got uh, Hebrew Scriptures uh, preceding the Christian, Hebrew preceding the Greek. <coughs> and we're looking for the first book of Samuel, 1 Samuel First Saint Kings, First Saint Chronicles, First Book of Samuel, and we're looking for chapter twenty-eight, large number in the margin, chapter twenty-eight, and the small numbers in the text are the verses. We're going from verse three. Verse three. Scroll back to it from the canticle we read a moment ago. If you're following online, now Samuel had died, and all Israel had mourned for him and buried him in Ramah, his own city. Saul had expelled the mediums and the wizards from the land. The Philistines assembled and came and encamped at Shunem, and Saul gathered all Israel and they encamped at Gilboa. When Saul saw the army of the Philistines, he was afraid, and his heart trembled greatly. When Saul inquired of the Lord, the God of the Lord, the Lord did not answer him, not by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Then Saul said to his servants, Seek out for me a woman who is a medium, so that I may go to her and inquire of her. His servants said to him, There is a medium at Endor. So Saul disguised himself and put on other clothes and went there. He and two men with him, they came to the woman by night, and he said, Consult a spirit for me, and bring up for me the one whom I name to you. The woman said to him, Surely you know what Saul has done, how he has cut off the mediums and the wizards from the land. Why then are you laying a snare for my life to bring about my death? But Saul swore to her by the Lord, as the Lord lives, no punishment shall come upon you for this thing. Then the woman said, Whom shall I bring up for you? And he answered, Bring up Samuel for me. When the woman saw Samuel, she cried out with a loud voice. The woman said to Saul, Why have you deceived me? You are Saul. The king said to her, Have no fear. What do you see? The woman said to Saul, I see a divine being coming out of the ground. He said to her, what is his appearance? She said, an old man is coming up, wrapped in a robe. So Saul knew that it was Samuel. He bowed, he bowed with his face to the ground and did obeisance. Then Samuel said to Saul, why have you disturbed me by bringing me up? Saul answered, I am in great distress, for the Philistines are warring against me. <clears throat> and God has turned away from me and answered me no more, either by the prophets or by dreams. So I have summoned you to tell me what I should do. Samuel said, why then do you ask me, since the Lord has turned from you and become your enemy? The Lord has done to you just as he spoke by me. For the Lord has torn the kingdom out of your hand and given it to your neighbour David, because you did not obey the voice of the Lord and did not carry out his fierce wrath against Amalek. 
Therefore the Lord has done this thing to you today. Moreover, the Lord will give Israel along with you into the hands of the Philistines. And tomorrow you and your sons will be with me. The Lord will also give the army of Israel into the hands of the Philistines. <coughs> Immediately Saul fell full length on the ground, filled with fear because of the words of Samuel, and there was no strength in him, for he had eaten nothing all day and all night. The woman came to Saul, and when she saw that he was terrified, she said to him, Your servant has listened to you. I have taken my life in my hand, and have listened to what you have said to me. Now therefore you also listen to your servant, let me set a morsel of bread before you, eat that you may have strength when you go on your way. He refused and said, I will not eat. But his servants, together with the woman, urged him, and he listened to their words, so he got up from the ground and sat on the bed. The woman took a fatted calf in the house, she quickly slaughtered it, and took flour, kneaded it, and baked unleavened cakes. She put them before Saul and his servants, and they ate. They rose and went away that night. <coughs> one of those extraordinary passages in scriptures where we're told, despite Saul being um, in God's bad books, <coughs> that he expelled mediums and wizards from the land. So we would think that that would be in his favour. Nevertheless, when he can't find any help or assistance from God, poor man, it's not like he isn't trying. We're told he tries um, dreams, Urim and prophets. So there are three different ways listed there in which God does offer divination, guidance, <clears throat> and um, Saul isn't being helped. He obviously has a habit of asking God before going into battle, yet nevertheless God has turned his face from it. It's really quite disturbing. Uh, <clears throat> so he goes and finds a medium, and he disguises himself, <clears throat> but the medium knows who he is when he asks for Samuel, and then bizarrely, given what, how we're supposed to understand um, clairvoyance and uh, speaking to the dead, as a fib, <coughs> a fable. Um, however, contacts and communi whatever contacts and communications we have, <coughs> I guess there are some that are legit and others that are um, iffy. But here we've actually got a scripture which says um, a monarch talks to a dead prophet via a medium and receives truth. Um, it wouldn't. It would be different almost if he received a lie, but he receives a truth and is, takes its heart, as do those who are with him. And uh, then the medium, who knew he, she shouldn't have shown him the vision, suggests he eats, he refuses, but he is, he is persuaded by his own staff alongside her, and she treats him as one would a king, killing the fatted calf, um, baking cakes of unleavened bread, and feeding him when he goes even that evening. Um... So, oh yeah, I'm not sure what we're to make of it, really. Um, <clears throat> except to recognise that uh, always in scriptures, just as in any good policy at home or at work, there is always a plan B, there's an escape route, there's an alternative, like uh, David eating the showbread, for instance. He shouldn't have done that, it should have been from the priests, but he did. And uh, we shouldn't talk to mediums, but here he does, uh, and it works out for him. He gets bad news, but he gets the truth. Uh, yes, as I say, I'm not sure what to make of it. So to Acts 4 from 13, then our next Bible reading. Um, Acts comes after the Gospels. It's also known as the Gospel of Luke, uh, as Luke wrote it. Do we know that? Do we think it? I don't know. Um, any road. Book of Acts uh, comes after the four Gospels, and the four Gospels open the Second Covenant, so two-thirds of the way through your Holy Bible. And Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and then Acts. We look at the Book of Acts. We're looking for large number four in the margin, chapter four in the Book of Acts, and we're reading verses 13. Two thirty one. Uh, I don't know whether symmetry is quite the right word, but uh, one three hyphen three one. Acts four, chapter thirty. Uh, Acts chapter four, verse thirteen. So large on the margin, chapter four, verses in the text, small number thirteen. Scroll on to it online. Now, when they saw the boldness of Peter and John and realised that they were uneducated and ordinary men, they were amazed and recognised them as companions of Jesus. When they saw the man who had been cured standing up beside them, they had nothing to say in opposition, so they ordered him to leave the council while they discussed the matter with one another. They said, what we do with them, for it is obvious to all who live in Jerusalem that a notable sign has been done through them, we cannot deny it, but to keep it from spreading further among the people, let us warn them to speak no more to anyone in this name. So they called them in order not to speak or teach at all the name of Jesus, but Peter and John answered them, whether it is right in God's sight to listen to you rather than to God, you must judge, for we cannot keep from speaking about what we find, what we have seen and heard. After threatening them again, they let them go, finding no way to punish them, because the people, of all, all of them, praised God for what had happened, for the man on whom this sign of healing had been performed was more than 40 years old. After they were released, they went to their friends and reported what the chief priests and elders had said to them. 
When they heard it, they raised their voices together to God and said, Sovereign Lord, you made the earth and the heaven and the earth, the sea and everything in them. It is you who said by the Holy Spirit through your ancestor David, your servant, why did the Gentiles rage and the people imagine vain things? The kings of the earth took their stand, the rulers gathered together against the Lord and against his Messiah. For in this city, in fact, both Herod and Pontius Pilate, with the Gentiles and the people of Israel, gathered together against your holy servant Jesus, whom you anointed to do whatever your hand and your plan had predestined to take place. Now, Lord, look at their threats and grant to your servants to speak your word with all boldness while you stretch out your hands to heal, and signs and wonders are performed through the name of your holy servant Jesus. When they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. They were all filled with the Holy Spirit and spoke the word of God with boldness. So the reading just begins now when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. <coughs> I'm imagining <coughs> these are temple authorities, but it doesn't immediately say so. And I would scroll back to yesterday, but we had different readings yesterday because it was transfiguration, so it wouldn't follow on directly. But um, the day before we had a chap healed, <coughs> was it the day before? Recently at any rate, we had a chap healed <coughs> who um, was carried to outside the um, temple. They didn't have money, but they told him to stand up and walk. <clears throat> and uh, it became very well known, and the people are concerned that people are beginning to think that there might be something in this new way, the Nazarene, the way um, that people from Nazareth are talking about, this sort of strand, this version of Judaism, which is much more immediate, calls God Daddy, <coughs> Abba, uh, not uh, the name. Very familiar, seems to avoid the need for the temple. We become the temple ourselves, full of the spirit, rather than having to go to priests in the temple building and uh, pay them for their indulgences and uh, expensive sacrifices using holy money, etc. <clears throat> so they were losing their power and grip on the people, and then their privilege, I guess, before Rome too, potentially, was at the back of their heads and back of their minds. So um, they say to uh, Peter John to stop it. Peter John says, well, you should judge whether we should listen to you or listen to God. Um, <clears throat> so they let them go. Uh, and then one of the things I love about this, apart from that kind of um, you should stop talking about the faith thing, which maybe some of us have had from our parents, maybe we've had it from our bosses, <clears throat> maybe you even had it from our church leaders, or our community. Um, but the second paragraph talks about how they put that into a, a context of faith and worship. So they are reminded of um, the scriptures, why do the Gentiles rage? The kings take, gather together against the Lord and his Messiah. <clears throat> and then they explain that they have actually seen that happening in their own day. Herod and Pontius Pilate, the Gentiles, Israel, people of Israel gathered against Jesus. Nevertheless, um, look at their threats to us, but please um, enable us to continue to speak with boldness and you stretch out your hand to heal <clears throat> with signs and wonders. And that would be our prayer today. And uh, the place where they were gathered was shaken. They were all filled with the Spirit and they spoke the word with boldness. <clears throat> and it doesn't say so there, but I'm sure tomorrow and the day after, as we read more of Acts, we will find that there were signs and wonders continuing. And may that be our prayer too, in our struggles, in our day, in our time, in our lives, as world community, um, we can connect with Scripture and what Scripture says, as they did. And we can recognise that um, God was persecuted in Jesus, so we are persecuted <clears throat> we have our hopes and our fears, just as Jesus did and the early disciples did. We have uh, gossips and traitors amongst us, as well as people who are on our side, within and beyond um, the bounds of our church community. But let us pray that we might be faithful uh, and experience uh, the power, the mystery, the intervention of uh, sovereign grace as we worship, uh, as we serve, as we are disciples, as we pray. And uh, that the community in which we live, as then, see that in God. And they do. People are moved um, to tears, to joy. People are healed. People are set free. Even in our um, Suffolk churches in this little northeast corner of the county, um, remarkably, God is active. Low-key, perhaps, if God could be described as being low-key. But lives are being changed, be inspired. To the response we back in morning prayer on Wednesday. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. For I am always with you. You hold me by my right hand, and afterwards receive me with glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord, you will guide me with your counsel, and afterwards receive me with glory. 
the song of Zechariah. You show mercy to our ancestors and remember your holy covenant. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was at the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. You show mercy to our ancestors, and remember your holy covenant. <coughs> Source and Essence 3 and 1, 1 in 3, we come to you at the beginning of this day, and we thank you for the uh, notion of uh, our experience being reflected in scripture, tradition, reason and revelation therein, thereby. <coughs> and uh, we pray that as we've set out today, we will be bold for you and that you will um, confirm, affirm us by granting us religious experience of uh, healings and of interventions that are attributable only to your engagement. <clears throat> and we pray for those who are struggling to find guidance and direction. We pray that you would be gracious and merciful and grant it to them that they need not um, seek you out uh, by means other than that standard approach. <clears throat> and uh, we pray that you would be with us as leaders and not turn to others and that you would guide, help and enable us not to make what appear to be petty errors, but end up, and or um, erring on the side of grace and mercy, but end up um, causing us to be rejected by you, despite having to look after your people. It must have been a very difficult place, a difficult thing for Saul to carry. So we pray you'll be merciful to uh, your church today. World Council of Churches, Press of Cameroon, Central African Republic, Equatorial New Guinea. We are thankful for those who minister to victims of sexual violence, trafficking and other human rights abuses. We pray for refugees who flee to other countries and for those who host them. <coughs> we pray that we become known as a nation that uh, promotes peace where these people would like to live, where they come from. We pray that we would provide a safe and legal route into our country and that we will invest in processing those claims such that those who do have um, connections and uh, can make a contribution to our community will be quickly integrated <coughs> and those who don't or aren't uh, may be helped or assisted to uh, pursue other avenues. We pray for people to speak up for the diversity which is the strength in our land over against the small number of people who are disenfranchised and who hear the whispers of discontent and hatred and bitterness. They may see those they attack as actually being their future and not their and their helper and not their enemy. Christian Act and Research Education, we pray for people of wicked intent who seek to violate and destroy our children. May your spirit convict them of the harm they are causing and repent of it. Please grant success to the police and National Crime Agency staff as they seek to identify and stop their activities. <coughs> yes, it's written, I guess, by people who just assume that um, people understand their, what they consider to be natural desires to be wicked rather than just the people that they are. I guess some people know they're being invited to do things that they really shouldn't but for others it might just have been a way of life they've been brought up in um, but nevertheless we pray not only for law enforcement but also other agencies that uh, perhaps those edgy ones that get involved in a way that uh, is tricky 
<clears throat> but with accountability and safety nets and whatnot in place, that they might help people to realise that what they're doing is not good for them, not socially acceptable, is life-limiting in many ways, that they might be moved to recognise there are other opportunities, other ways of being, that they might move to those for greater fulfilment and acceptance. From Green Christian, tonight's another Green Christian workshop. Fairly traded, price, power and place, what next after 30 years of fair trade with Sarah Brazier, who is head of the campaigns at the Fair Trade Foundation. <coughs> you may go to the Chris Green Christian website uh, to register, but uh, it's free to uh, join in. So thank you for uh, Sarah, her contribution for the Green Christian organisers and uh, for all who will attend, will attend. We pray with blessing to them and their communities. The Anglican Communion has five marks of mission, the fifth of which is our engagement with the environment. Pope Francis' prayer for creation includes the lines, O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. Bring healing to our lives that we may protect the world and not prey on it, that we may sow beauty, not pollution and destruction. Benefit cycle on Wednesday, pray for teachers. <coughs> and... Uh, for young people, and we pray for those who teach the old and young independent living, hobbies, crafts, sports, reading, writing, use of the interweb, etc. And those that are on a holiday, mainly those involved in the academic side, I guess, um, we pray they might find rest, recuperation, inspiration uh, in these weeks of the summer holidays. And we pray for young people. Thank you that uh, my colleague was here to talk to the press yesterday who was looking for bad news stories. We thank you for the good relations that we have as church with the youngsters. <clears throat> we pray that we might help those around who are negatively disposed towards them not to make their own circumstances the more difficult by antagonising. <clears throat> we pray for our preparation for our Monday evening. Do. I'm grateful that they feel happy, the young people feel uh, Welcome <clears throat> and able to come in and use the building and uh, join in with worship temporarily for a while, sit in whilst we're here. We pray that we might grow on that and uh, give them a place and a footing within the community and uh, perhaps consider ways of helping them serve as we serve them. <coughs> Pray for our people looking after our churches today, for the wardens in the uh, St Peter's group, John and Chris at Holton, Jonathan at Weniston, Ginny at Bramfield, uh, Charlie at Blyford, and uh, Mike at Thorrington, All Saints, uh, Thorrington, St Peter rather, All Saints Blyford is, St Andrew Bramfield, St Peter Weniston, St Peter Holton. <coughs> We've also got names for roles at Holton, we'll include Jill, Helen Antidot, Betty, Mary, Diane, Marjorie, Joan, Julian, Linda, Eric, Phyllis, Edith, Jim and Jackie. And in Weniston, Ditto Allison, also the Margarets, Bloomfield, Goldsmith, Goldstone, Angela Mary, Moira Francis, Valerie, Dorothy, Jane, uh, Valerie has died, sadly, um, Dorothy, Jane, Robert, Heather, Serena, Colin, Jennifer, Felicity, Vivian, Graham, Ruth, John, Sally, David, Diana, Joanna, Jean, Suzanne, Francis, Anna, Colin. Don't have names of the others, but uh, we pray blessing and similar. Pray that you enable us to increase the numbers of those who would support uh, the church by being involved on the PCC and or on the roll. Though it's a bit of an odd contrivance. But we pray you draw people into the committees who are um, loving, fun, honest, open, people of integrity and vision, energy, that uh, those buildings might continue to thrive and prosper and grow in their influence and connection and use within their communities uh, to your glory. Alongside and uh, in, uh, in support of those who are serving there uh, as we speak, for whom obviously we are grateful. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pass in the Rohot and Lear Kishin, but of a form of my young sister headed Masparatus, no one at Sakani Aras. Chancellor Moko Mira Pahedi, Mother Pashpatana, some Makucha, who has Mara Mahadi, a Kushna Madi, and a Mesh Mahama Sanes. Chancellor Moko Jadana, he has made every map of Romans, my journey is a Kadiras, Marahas and Kas. Chancellor Moko Janish Marabit, and the Hasmaluru, and the Sarah Jesmash, her husband, Kujanas. 
Hemen yeni bakım kıyaslarına hiç malumat yok. Mesela yarış mı? Hemen karış mı? Hemen yer. Hemen sarı kuştur. O yer hiç mi? Hemen akad yok. Hemen bakım yok. Hemen şerahin yer mi? Hemen yalnız mı? Hemen yer gömediyem. Hoş mesela diye. Hemen eşeği kifuhu ve hah da gelmiş. Şehri gibi şerahin her amayı bu çöre bakım. Mesela hemen asaha. Şans salam ve hendi yere kaçın. Dere fahmet olur. Şans salam ve yere mesela bir fahsın gelmiş. Şans salam ve hendi yere kaçın. Dere fahmet olur. Şans salam ve Yang masuk rumah hendak rujukan sila kini rahsia yang fasa merah hari Islam. Tahun ini rujukan fasa merah dasi dah di kerumah jatuh hari ini kerjaan semua orang ramai rujukan cerita Islam. Hari ini Almighty and Everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger. Order us in all our doings and guide us to do always what is righteous in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray, our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Goodbye to those joining us on YouTube.